Congressman Burke, Senator Obenshain. I would ask the gentleman, what exactly was it that the gentleman said he's giving to us? The senior uh, senator from Fairfax, Senator Saslaw. I said, I'm helping out all of my friends, and I consider you all over there my friends. I'm and over here are my friends. Senator from Harrisonburg, Senator Obenchain. Mr. President, I would ask the gentleman whether the uh, citizens of Fairfax County are not among his friends. The senior senator from Fairfax, Senator Saslaw. Definitely, they are among my friends and some of my strongest supporters, as well as the people from the west end of the city, the great city of Alexandria. The senator I, from Harrisonburg, Senator Obenchain. Mr. President, I would ask the gentleman further whether it was perhaps a mistake and an oversight that you weren't extending that uh, benefit to your friends in uh, Fairfax and the west side of Alexandria as well. Senior well, senator from Fairfax, Senator Saslaw. Well, the people that represent them didn't come to me and ask me for that kind of a help, so that's why uh, I didn't include them in. Mr. President, I would ask— Senator, Let's slow down a little bit. Senator from Harrisonburg, Senator Obenchain. President, I would ask the gentleman uh, which people from the city of Harrisonburg came and asked him for this help. Senior Senator from Fairfax, Senator Saslaw. It would look to me, it, it, it appeared to me, and you know, and sometimes, Mr. President, I do make a mistake, but it would appear to me that their elected representative is asking me for help. Mr. President. Senator from Harrisonburg. And Mr. Senator President, Obenshain. I hope I haven't mistook his, his intentions by that votes up there on the board. Uh, slow down. Let's. Right. Uh, make comments in response to the invitation of the chair. Mr. The Senator President. From Harrisonburg, Senator Obenshain. A further question. I, I would uh, ask the gentleman whether he considered the vote on House Bill 1451, the previous bill, uh, part of that invitation that we extended. The senior senator from Fairfax, Senator Saslaw. Well, to be honest, Mr. President, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to that. I drew this up based on all the other votes. Senator well, from Harrisonburg, Senator Obenshain. Well, I would ask that in light of the uh, vote on House Bill 1451, whether perhaps it was an oversight not to include Henry County, perhaps, on this list. The senior senator from Fairfax, Senator Saslaw. Well, you know, I can't keep, you know, track of, of who's doing what. I just had a consistent, you know, pattern from a group of people in here, and I filed that. And next year, we can deal with Henry County. The senator from Harrisonburg, Senator Obenshain. Mr. President, I would ask the gentleman whether uh, the gentleman checked with uh, the uh, localities to find out the extent to which they may have uh, issued bonds that are dependent upon or which they are legally obligated to continue to collect these uh, revenues in order to avoid uh, default upon those uh, obligations. The senior senator from Fairfax, Senator Saslaw. Well, Mr. President, <clears throat> I would assume that uh, they're speaking through their legislators, Mr. President, and that um, their legislators don't want other people to have it, and I just made the assumption they didn't want themselves to have it, and I'm trying to help them out, sir. That's all I'm trying to do. Just be helpful. Senator from Harrisonburg, Senator Obenshain. Mr. President, uh, apparently my question was not very uh, well put, and I would uh, try to do a better job of asking that question again the second time around. And I would ask the gentleman uh, whether he checked to find out whether some of these jurisdictions that uh, he's listed in here have issued and current outstanding bonded indebtedness upon which they are obligated to continue to collect uh, these funds. Take, for example, Virginia Beach. I would ask the gentleman whether he made those inquiries. Senior Senator from Fairfax, Senator Saslaw. Well, you know, Mr. President, I would assume that they elect responsible people who know what their situation is and do the responsible voting up there, and I took, I went strictly on that basis. Senator from Harrisonburg, Senator Obenshain. Mr. President, I would suggest that perhaps my ability to phrase a question is hopelessly uh, deficient, so I will abandon that uh, line of question, and I would ask the gentleman whether perhaps he had uh, checked with Moody's or Standards and Poor's as to how they would view uh, the adoption of uh, this amendment and a bill with this uh, amendment uh, placed upon it. Senior Senator from Fairfax, Senator Saslaw. Well, you know, Mr. President, I didn't get a chance to check with them, and I would ask, I certainly would ask, uh, the senator from Harrisonburg, if he bothered to check with some of the senators from other areas that needed this, their, the transient occupancy tax, perhaps to keep their public schools open, 
uh, and provide health and human services and public safety if he checked with them before he voted against uh, their uh, transient occupancy tax. I yield. Senator, <laughs> Senator from Harrisonburg, Senator Obenshain. I yield. Senator has the floor. Oh. Mr. President, speaking to the bill. Mr. President, uh, members of the Senate, now, we have expended uh, 15 minutes today. We have expended probably significantly more time than this in uh, at least uh, my colleagues on the opposite side of the aisle's caucus uh, addressing this issue. And uh, it appears that I owe the senior senator from Fairfax uh, an apology. And uh, I want to extend that apology to him. Uh, I know that for the past seven or eight years, uh, we have routinely uh, had bills of this nature, transient occupancy tax extensions that have come up. And for the past seven or eight years, there have been hmm, four or five or six votes that have been cast in opposition to the extension of new transient occupancy tax uh, extensions. And apparently when last week or two weeks ago there were uh, three or four votes cast in opposition to that, it caused the senior senator from Fairfax County perhaps a sprain in his neck as he wheeled uh, to the left to find out who uh, was had the temerity to cast such a, uh, a vote. And I would, uh, Mr. President, uh, remind the members of this body that, you know, yes, uh, we already had this discussion earlier in this session, that there was a day, indeed, in which Virginia was governed by one party rule. And uh, we had a day in which the Senate of Virginia was uh, governed with an iron fist, in which uh, party discipline was chamber discipline because there was only one party that was represented in the chamber of the Senate of Virginia. And when anybody back in the day dared to dissent on a vote, it was a monumental breach in party discipline. Mr. President, members of the Senate, we have fortunately emerged beyond the point at which this chamber is dominated by one party. And frankly, that is one of the benefits of a representative democracy, is that we are able to come here and agree to disagree on some issues. And I would respectfully submit that one of the things that I've enjoyed the most about my service in the Senate has been the collegial atmosphere and the ability to smile and disagree and walk out of here and maybe break bread and have a sandwich with one another afterwards. And uh, to the extent that I have upset the apple cart by failing to uh, display the kind of chamber discipline that existed back in the day, I apologize to the members of the body, but I will not apologize for standing up and failing to vote for an extension of a tax that did not exist before, or that, that was not granted to that extent before we cast those votes. Now, tempted as I am to support this bill, it is a mighty temptation to do that uh, in order to provide the citizens of my district and other districts with a cut in their taxes. However, what the senator is trying to do is actually just flat irresponsible. I mean, we have issued hundreds of millions of dollars of bonded uh, instruments on the basis of the revenue that's been generated, and anybody understands that it places these jurisdictions, uh, maybe not mine, but others, in a position in which they would be in default immediately upon the passage of this piece of legislation. And I don't want to stand here and be hypocritical. I want to make sure that the gentleman from, senior senator from Fairfax understands that if he wants to accept this invitation and extend these benefits to the citizens of my county or other counties uh, represented by folks who are willing to stand strong for the taxpayers of the Commonwealth of Virginia, maybe there are some appropriate ways that I could suggest 
that maybe the senior senator from Fairfax might entertain in future days and maybe even in future sessions. For example, I would suggest that maybe next year an amendment in the nature of uh, exempting the good citizens of the city of Harrisonburg from the individual income tax, perhaps, would be a welcome development. Or perhaps the corporate income tax would be a welcome development. Or perhaps the sales tax would be a welcome development. Oh, and heaven forbid, maybe even the gas tax or maybe even the Apple excise tax. I could continue to go on, Mr. President, but I won't. I think that I thank the gentleman for his thoughtfulness. I thank the gentleman for his creativity. And uh, I certainly hope that uh, it's extended in uh, all all seriousness and that we can look for, continue to work cooperatively to look for ways that we can relieve the good people of the Commonwealth of Virginia of the burden of unwanted additional taxes. And, uh, perhaps, I, and, and perhaps this isn't the best way, but every year I come to this uh, General Assembly session with a handful of good ideas for reducing the tax burden on the citizens of the Commonwealth from uh, uh, Pennington Gap all the way to uh, Chincoteague and Cape Charles, Virginia, and I certainly hope that in the spirit of collegiality that the senior senator from Fairfax and I might be able to have a sandwich back here after session today and maybe talk about some ways that we can extend that uh, tax relief to the good citizens of the Commonwealth of Virginia, maybe through the budget conference, uh, or maybe next year we can get back together and extend that relief. Mr. President, thank you. Uh, for recognizing me, and uh, I would urge the members to vote responsibly on this matter.